All right, this plant here is wood nettle. It's a fairly common wild edible that grows in the eastern and central U.S. and Canada. Um, you can find it as far north and west as Saskatchewan and as far south and east as Louisiana. Um, and it likes these kinds of habitats. Uh, wooded, partially open, wet. We're close to a river here. You can maybe see it in the distance there. Um, so if you go looking for floodplains, open forest, trail sides, here's the trail right here. Chances are you'll find this plant. This is a close-up of the stem of wood nettle, and you can see the leaves coming off in an alternate fashion, um, which basically means that there's one leaf coming off at each point along the stem, um, versus opposite leaves, where there'll be two leaves coming off, like a V-shape from one point of the stem. So this leaf arrangement will distinguish it from things like stinging nettle and the clear weeds and false nettle, which look vaguely similar but have opposite leaves. Uh, and you might also notice that the stems here for the leaves, the petioles as they're called, are very long. Um, you don't see them that long on stinging nettle, and the leaf shape itself is much broader than that of stinging nettle, or than that when, than what stinging nettle typically is. Anyway, um, these leaves are more egg shaped, whereas stinging nettle is usually more oval or land shaped. So even though wood nettle sounds like a pretty benign name compared to stinging nettle. Um, it actually has way more stingers than stinging nettle does, in my experience anyway. It's much more heavily armed, and you can see them all on here. Um, they're like tiny little hypodermic needles, and when you brush against them, they break off and release chemicals into your skin that immediately give it an itchy and burny sensation. Um, it's not like poison ivy where, you know, it's a rash that takes a while to develop. Um, this will hurt you immediately. Uh, but ironically, it's also medicinal. It's um, got some of the same compounds that is found in bee stings. And those have been used medicinally for things like MS and muscle pain and joint pain. So it's kind of interesting that a sting can also be a medicine. So, how do you eat these without getting stung? Um, well, drying, steaming, cooking, sautéing, all of that disarms the stinger, so you're safe. Um, and basically what you want to do is pick off the leaves in the spring. Um, right now you can see that they're flowering. These green things are the flowers, not very showy. Um, but anyway, they're flowering, so they're putting the energy into the flower, so it's not the ideal time to harvest the leaves anymore to eat. But earlier in the spring, they are delicious. They're spinach-like, they're rich in iron, potassium, calcium, vitamin A and C, they're very good for you. So here's some more wood nettle that's growing right along the edge of the trail. And maybe you can tell, maybe you can't. Hopefully you can. Uh, but this is much, much taller than the other th stuff we were looking at. Um, this stuff is maybe five feet tall. And I would hazard to guess and say that's from all the sunlight it's receiving. Um, I'm sure the soil is very rich here from the flooding and misproduce these huge wood nettles. Um, you know, typically I see them around 
maybe two to three feet tall, but these are not typical. Very cool. So perfect, here's some stinging nettle for comparison. Um, the leaves here are opposite. So you see they're coming off the stem like in a V, one leaf directly opposite the other. Um, remember that wood nettle has alternate leaves. This is stinging nettle. And from the top here, you can see the leaves are much more narrow. They are more of a lance shape than an egg shape. Also, the sky is flowering. Those little green spikes coming off are the flowers. And you can see, whereas in wood nettle they came off at the top of the plant, these are coming off from the leaf axles, where the leaf meets the stem. The leaf stem meets the main stem. And this is a much more weedy plant than wood nettle. Um, it's much more common in the United States and Canada. It's found in all the states and provinces except Arkansas and Nunavut. Um, so it's very easy to find. It grows often in open fields, roadsides, trail sides, along sidewalks and yards and gardens. And that's awesome because it is a delicious and healthy plant. Like wood nettle, stinging nettle is full of vitamins and minerals. Uh, again, calcium, vitamin C, iron, vitamin A. Um, it's often used to treat anemia or uh, treat people who have other vitamin deficiencies. And for that purpose, you can drink it as a tea or eat it as a green. Either way will do. Um, Again, like with wood nettle, this is not the ideal time of year to eat it. Here you can see the little green inconspicuous flowers of stinging nettle. And uh, some people say you shouldn't eat it after it flowers because the leaves develop this compound called cystoliths. Um, and those can be, some say those can be damaging to the kidneys. Um, but if you're worried about it, just don't eat it after it flowers or make sure to dry it first. Um, drying destroys the cystoliths. So you can dry the leaves and then use them in tea and you'll be fine. Here's a uh, little bent over specimen of stinging nettle. Um, and I just wanted to say that you eat it just like wood nettle. Um, you pinch off the top of the plant here and that's something you'd want to do in the spring and you steam it or saute it. Basically you cook it like spinach and the cooking, the steaming, the drying, it all destroys the stinging. So you get to eat it without it stinging your mouth, which is great. And some people actually say they prefer the taste of wood nettle to stinging nettle. Um, I mean, I like them both, I guess. Wood nettle is better, but stinging nettle is just so much easier to find that I tend to go for it more often because I'm lazy. So there you are. So here's some clear weed growing right next to wood nettle. Um, the first and most obvious difference is that wood nettle has all these stinging hairs on it. If you want to, you could touch it and see if it stings you, and that way you know it's wood nettle. Um, whereas, <laughs> that might not be the best idea though. Um, whereas clear weed here is completely hairless and does not sting you at all. Um, another difference, clear weed is opposite leaves. Wood nettle is alternate. Clear weed stem looks different. It kind of looks like jewel weed if you're familiar with that plant. It has kind of a translucent light green quality. Um, both 
stinging nettle and wood nettle. You can see the stem looks much more solid. It's matte, it's hairy, it's different. You can tell, I hope. Okay, so I just went ahead and ripped off a piece of stinging nettle so you can see the difference. Um, here's stinging nettle, here's clearweed. Um, stinging nettle, see it depends on the subspecies that grows in your area. In our area, the subspecies does not have a lot of stingers on it at all, which is what allows me to hold it like this, which is one of the reasons why telling by the sting isn't always the easiest. Um, but you can see how much narrower the leaves are. This is the leaf of stinging nettle. And this is the leaf of clear weed. Um, these are much more egg shaped. These are more lance shaped. Um, they're finely toothed. Look at the toothing on that versus the coarse blunt teeth of clearweed. Um, and again, depending on your subspecies, uh, your variety of stinging nettle might have more of an egg-shaped leaf. Those are commonly found as well. Um, but again, it'll have the fine teeth and the venation is different. Um, if you look at the veins on the leaves, there's one main vein that comes down and then veins that shoot off that main vein rather than the three parallel veins of clearweed. Hope that makes sense. And you guys are lucky because I'm finding all of the uh, lookalikes here of nettle. Um, this is false nettle. Um, oh, sorry, I'm itchy. <laughs> okay. Uh, this here is false nettle. Um, like stinging nettle, it has these flowers that come off at the leaf axles. But unlike stinging nettle, they're little spikes. So you can see they kind of grow upright. Whereas on stinging nettle here, they just kind of droop down. False nettle is totally hairless on the stem and leaves. It's smooth as a baby's bottom over here. But on here, you can see all the little hairs, little stingers. And you can see the difference in the flower heads. Um, these ones are upright, more upright than those of stinging nettle. So here's wood nettle. Um, uh, so yeah, you can tell they look different from these uh, weird spiky <laughs> flowers found on false nettle. Here's a, another false nettle plant. Um, you can see there's the spiky flower heads here. We have the opposite leaves. And we have the uh, egg-shaped Flash opal shaped leaves.